my god. Where do I begin? Okay. I'm gonna talk about the ending first because that that just happened. Uh, the ending. Ugh. Honestly, the ending could have been a bit better. It went on a lot longer than I thought it did. I don't remember it being that long, but I do like what I did like was I liked at the very end they showed the very beginning. Remember when in the beginning of the game we saw Aerith, Aerith's face and the live stream around her. I like how we saw that. So I like how they connected the whole Aerith thing and the holy materia. But yeah, uh, the ending could have left a lot to be desired, but it was still pretty good. I thought Midgar was gonna get destroyed and then it got it's I guess it's healing. They don't really give us much after that, so. Alright, it's time for my review. Um okay, I'm gonna start I'm actually gonna start with the music first, because the music's not very long. Music is good, typical Final Fantasy tracks. I love it. Uh it's one of my favorite Final Fantasy soundtracks up there with FF10, FF102, FF8. It's a really good soundtrack. I like all the tracks. Um Specifically, I like Tifa's theme, uh, Sephiroth's theme is really good, One Winged Angel, Birth of a God, Boss theme, which is Fight On, I think, and the battle theme is pretty good, too. Um, I also liked the Shimra theme. The Shimra theme was really good. It really set, I mean, I feel like the Shimra are okay as villains, but it really set them up to be what they were, you know, kind of anti, kind of semi-villains, not really, though. Um, yeah, the music good though. Um, I'm gonna talk about the story now. The story is amazing. I think this Final Fantasy game of I don't know if it's my favorite plot, but it is one of my favorite storylines in a Final Fantasy game. Like of all the ones I played, this one and Final Fantasy X are two of my favorite plots in the whole series. They're both just amazing. The way they handle their storytelling is incredible. Um, I enjoyed it. I felt like it fell a little... Oh, wait. I haven't touched my controller in a while. Um, it was good for the most part. I feel like it fell flat. Like, on the part when you were chasing Sephiroth and not much was going on, it wasn't... There wasn't much going on, but... Specifically, I think disc 2, I mean disc 1 was good when when Aerith passed away. That was like a really touching scene As sad as I was that Aerith died. I think they handled that well um, Disc 2 did really well with the whole Cloud remember clouds past and calm and then him remembering wrong and then Zach coming into it and then the whole thing with cloud being an experiment and all that everything in disc 2 with the confusion the thing that's really hard to understand for some people, that was really well done. Despite me taking like a while to actually understand it. The first time I played, I did not understand what was going on. But um, that was handled really well. Now that I'm looking at it with a new set of eyes. like Now that I'm seeing it again and I'm much older than I was when I first played it. I see this too as a good storytelling now. It's, it's amazing. This game, the story is really good. Also, moving on to the characters. The characters are all really good, but I do have mixed receptions of them. Cloud's a really good character. I like Cloud. I like Tifa. Um, Barret is okay. I do understand the type of character they made Barret, you know, because he does say a lot of curse words, and he's like that kind of... I don't even know the right word, but um, Barret's not my type of character, but he's not all bad. But he's not my type of character. Um, Red 13 was good. Um, Sid was good. Sid was okay. Sid was kind of there. They didn't really do much with Sid besides the whole ship. They did kind of... With Red 13 and Sid, I feel like they could have done more with. They did kind of expand her. They did kind of show the backstories. But they maybe could have done a little more. Um, Cloud and Tifa obviously got the most attention. Barrett didn't really get much attention later in the game. And Yuffie and Vincent are optional, so obviously they, their character development kind of resided in side quests. Yuffie got a lot if you did the Wutai side quests. You got to understand Yuffie. Yuffie was a fun character. I do like how she was all like with you just to eventually take your materia. Yeah, that was good. Vincent though, 
Vincent didn't really get much character development, even if you did the Vincent's Cave side quest. Okay, you know that Lucretia, who was, I think it was Sephiroth's mom. You know that Vincent had a connection with her, but you don't really know much about Vincent. Even if you do that side quest, you're really confused. But yeah, they, they were optional, and it sucked that they weren't in the ending. Because, you know, they're optional, I get that, but still, it would have been great to see them in the ending. Like, it would have been great if they had two alternatives showing you what Yuffie and Vincent would be doing at the end. Aerith was a good character, you know, she passed, but she was still a good character for when we had her. We had her for a while. And, um, finally, Kate Sith. I do not like Kate Sith. Obviously, my least favorite character in this game. I just felt like, at first, I didn't like him because he was just, like, shoehorned in the story and he just felt like he was there just to be there. But I don't really like the way they made him, like, a spy for Shimra, and then he was like... I do think it was an interesting concept, the fact that Reeve was controlling him and he was a robot. We found that out later. But I don't really like the way he was all like, oh, I'm your friend, I'm your enemy, I'm... It, it's just not... Yeah, I don't know. I think they could have handled that a little better, but I don't really like Kate Sit as a character anyway, so nothing would have worked. The other characters are good. I, um, the Shimmer, I feel like, didn't really get much time. I feel like Rufus, Heidegger, Scarlet... Hojo got a lot, I feel. He got a lot of time. But most of them didn't really get much time. I feel like they could have been more villainous, but they really weren't. Because Sephiroth was like the main villain, so Shimra was kind of in Sephiroth's shadow. You didn't really get to understand Shimra's intentions besides like taking life energy. But I did like the fact that there were two villains. I think. Oh, there's another cutscene. Okay. I'll continue talking after this. Oh my god. I do like that though. They show Red 13 howling and I think I think that was Red 13. Is there more? I think that was Red 13 and his kids, right? I would assume so. Okay, that is it. I'm gonna talk about the game more, so. Um let me go let me just leave it here so I don't know if it plays the opening again. But, um, yeah, that was Red 13. I would think that was Red 13 as kids. That was really good. They showed 500 years later. Like, he outlived the rest of the characters, I think. I think that's the point of that. But that was a nice touch to add. Anyway, where was I with the review? I think I was talking about Sephiroth? Something like that. I was talking about the villains, I think. I think I said Shinra didn't really get a chance to be, like, the bad guys. I did like the fact that they had... Shimra and Sephiroth as the villains to change things up, but I feel like Sephiroth kind of I don't really know the word, but I think he was shown more than Shimra in a way. Well, Shimra was shown more, but Sephiroth's motives were emphasized more than Shimra's. Shimra's were only in like the very beginning of the game before Sephiroth was even mentioned. Mentioned, yeah. But yeah, the villains were good regardless. Um... Something I feel like why the characters aren't as good is because it's kind of like with Final Fantasy VIII. You can choose your party members for most scenarios. There are certain times where they make you have certain characters. This game more than Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy VIII, it's mostly you get to choose your own party members. This game, there are certain story arcs that they have you have like maybe Red 13 if it's in Cosmo Canyon. 
Sid if it's in um, Rocket Town. But still, um, I feel like that kind of affects the character development because obviously they would have to come up with different unique voice dialogues for each character. So they just kind of make every character say like similar wordings. So that's why it's like that could affect the character, the characters themselves. But they're still really good. I love these characters and their story arcs. I would say that these characters are better, are slightly better than FF8. First of all, there's more of them. But Final Fantasy VIII still has good characters. These are definitely up there too. Um, I think the gameplay, the gameplay, you know, ATB, I do feel, I like the materia system, but I do feel like compared to Junction, it's not as good. That's just my personal preference. I know a couple of people like FF8's combat, no, FF7's combat, and a lot of people do not like the junction system, but that may be because it's, like, confusing. But me, personally, I like the junction system more, but this system still works for me. Materia is fun. I do like making all kinds of combinations. It's really good. I like combining certain things to make different effects. That, that definitely sparked my interest a lot during the playthrough, uh, especially towards the end of the game. I feel like you get most of the good materia at the end, so you can't really take advantage of the combinations until late game. At least 70% into the game. But it was still really good, and I do feel like they could have had, besides enemy skills, there's not really much physical moves besides attacking until the end of the game. So I feel like a lot of the creativity opens up at the end. But this is still a co great combat system. And... I also don't really like that you can't attack when you have your limit. So if you have your limit, you have to kind of hold it. If you don't want to use your limit, you can't attack. You have to just use magic. And what if your character isn't magic-based? Then you can't really do anything unless you have enemy skills or death blow materia. So I feel like that was just a small nitpick. Graphics in this game are really good. You know, it hasn't aged well, and that's obvious, but that's fine. Something else is the map is like, this is like Final Fantasy VIII also. Um, sometimes you can't even see where you're going, so it's really hard to navigate some of the game's dungeons. But that's another nitpick. I just have problems finding out where to go. I don't know if there's anything else to talk about. Um, hmm. Oh, rating. I think that's it for the game. I talked about the music, the gameplay, the story, the characters, the graphics. Um, 8 out of 10, I would say. that 8 out of 10, definitely. This game is good. It's one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. So, I've, I really enjoyed this game. Playing through it was great. And, as you guys know, we're not done. So, yeah, I think that wraps up my review.